Welcome back as we bring you part two of our double episode Super Sunday right here on the Falls Count Everywhere podcast. Tonight's episode is brought to you by the following. American Championship Wrestling. Don't miss the first show of 2023 as American Championship Wrestling returns to St. Clair, Missouri this Saturday, February 25th at the Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Doors open at 5, bell time at 6 p.m. All tickets are just $6. Get your tickets at the door or visit acwtheshow.ticketleap.com to get them in advance. American Championship Wrestling, where the fans come first. Before each and every show, we like to remind our audience that freedom is never free and all of us should be grateful to those who lay it all on the line. To all our first responders, military, and volunteers that help our nation every day, we love you and appreciate the sacrifices you make to protect all of us. We're coming at you live with episode 91 of the Falls Count Everywhere podcast as we welcome former Impact Wrestling X Division champion and current All Elite Wrestling talent, the Mocha Skin Animal, Rohit Raju. This podcast is scheduled for one episode where Falls Count Everywhere. Uh, we're back. Did you miss us? Heck no, because you weren't gone that long. At least we weren't anyway, guys. Welcome back. It's part two of this big double episode Super Sunday here with the Falls County Everywhere podcast, where this episode is episode number 91. And waiting in the wings here in a short while, we're going to be bringing on Rohit Raju uh, that uh, that uh, we're going to be talking a lot of wrestling here with him and uh, what he's got going on. Uh, in his world. So, as always, uh, as we said, if you don't know us by now, I don't know where you're putting your head, but I'm Rough Cut Rick Ruby <laughs> here on the left. The Gem City Mouth Zemiz is on the right. And Z, man, what a great first show we have with Dan to be severed, man. I mean, what? I mean, I mean sure, the, the guy can tell stories, man. I, I was hoping we could have more, and if we had a longer time frame, we would have done it. But, uh, Hopefully he'll uh, want to come back on here and uh, maybe down the road. Yeah, that's one of my like legitimately. I remember going to the VHS store, you know, getting the VHSs, riding my bike back home, watching him choke dudes out. Like so, getting to meet one of the legends that I used to watch in the UFC. Uh, that that's awesome, awesome. Yeah, man. That that's. I mean, just uh, I want to go back and watch the UFC's. Uh, four and five, and I want to watch to see if I can find the ultimate ultimate because people don't realize Shamrock had to wrestle three guys. I mean, fight fight three guys. Seven mm-hmm. had to fight three guys, and then they had to go fight each other. So they were just beat. <laughs> I mean, they were just beat by the time. And uh, no holds barred, drag them out, no time limit. Uh, man, yeah, that was quite a uh, that was quite an era to uh, to look at back then. So um, yeah, we're uh, moving right along, and we're going to uh, be going uh, to show you our upcoming shows because we've got a lot going on, guys. Here we go. Right here. Uh, you might have just saw it a little bit ago here, but American Championship Wrestling coming back to St. Clair, Missouri, this Saturday, uh, Friday. Uh, so, good Lord. February 25th. I'll get the month right eventually. Where the hell is my head? Uh, but doors open at five bells at six. All tickets are six dollars. And of course, Dan to B7 will be in, in attendance, guys. So uh, make sure you go to acwtheshow.ticketleaf.com to get your tickets in advance, or you can get them at the door. But it's going to be a packed house. I'm going to tell you right now, it is going to be a packed house. No doubt about it. All right. 
And uh, where is my next one? Okay. Things are going so well, and now I got to get everything messed up, messing up here. So hold on. I got it. Is it this one? Oh, yeah. Here we go. It's yes. Just, there you go. IWA Productions uh, will be in the house in Mount Vernon, Illinois, also on February 25th, next Saturday. Shailen, uh, uh, Tobias Storm, and uh, Sid Howland, all defending their championships. PYT will make your debut there. A 521 Perkins Street. Uh, make sure that you're there. Uh, 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 tickets in advance are $10, 12 at the door. Um, and uh, you can always find I IWA Productions on Facebook for more information on their shows. Here's a new one we haven't put up yet. And uh, just so you know, we're going to, uh, this is for Allied Independent Wrestling Federations that will be in uh, Mount Airy, North Carolina. Uh, that's on Saturday, March 4th. Uh, Doors open at 6, bell times at 7. And let me get rid of this real quick because my name tag's covering this. Like that. There you go. That's a lot better. Um, but uh, the adults are $10, kids are 5 5 and under are free. And uh, we're going to be, tentatively, we got Matt Creed that will be joining us next Sunday. We'll talk all about the Allied Independent Wrestling Federations and what all that they're nice. doing across the country. So uh, we're going to be getting into that in a little bit uh, down the road. Probably we'll touch on that toward the end of the show. And here's another one for Arkansas Wrestling Association for Wrestling for a Cure on Saturday, March 11th. Of course, pictured there, of course, is Wildfire Tommy Rich, uh, Doug Gilbert, and Luke Justice, of course, in the back, uh, former guest of ours. And then, of course, there is Jerry the King Lawler. Just remember that all card is subject to change. So, you know. Hopefully the king can make it, and hopefully he's better after uh, the stroke he's had recently. Ringside seats for twenty. Uh, General admission is twelve, and of course uh, you can you can call. Uh, there's two numbers there at the bottom uh, that you can call uh, for more information on that. And this was given to us last week, but this is for New Genesis Wrestling. That's going to be on Saturday, April fifteenth, at the right fight at the Lou Civic Center in Muskegon, Illinois. Doors open to six, bell times at seven, and belts uh, $10, kids five, and ages five and under are free. And uh, you can visit newgenesiswrestling.com for more information on their on their show coming up. And at least for that, we want to mention here big time fan fest here. Around close to 30 names. Well, we are an official sponsor. We will actually be at this event. Me, myself, and the Gem City Moth will be there. The SICW Fan Fest that will start at 10 a.m. It will go to 5 p.m. Okay, because they got to transition to get things ready. But it will be the big Fan Fest. And, of course, later on that night, the St. Louis Wrestling Hall of Fame induction ceremony of Gerald Briscoe and also the legendary manager of the Four Horsemen, J.J. Dillon, will be inducted into the St. Louis Wrestling Hall of Fame. Yes. So... May 13th, that's a big day. That's a big, big day for a lot of folks, and it's definitely a big day for us, and we hope to have all of you there. Go to SICW.org. Once again, it's SICW.org for information on your tickets to get those purchased. Okay? Now, you're kind of wondering here, uh, you know, I mean, there's going to be more shows upcoming and everything else, but uh, one thing that we actually wanted to do here, or at least we thought we did, Z is uh, we we thought about maybe just doing uh, like a contest because you know we always do our golden memes uh, throughout you know for each show we didn't do it for Dan because Dan had a lot of stories we had the time to commit to him and uh, we wanted to get that out of the way but we want you guys to see uh, what your uh, caption would be for this here because this is our guest coming up for well, the one applying the choke. And uh, <laughs> we're gonna, we want you all to <laughs> put what the, in that white bar up there, what is a good title for this meme right here? Because, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, there's several things that you could do. I mean, as far as, uh, you know, I don't know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give you all any hints, but if you all have got a, we're gonna leave this up here for a little bit, but just, uh, <laughs> 
I think our I love this photo. <laughs> Ro Rohit here looks a little too happy here, choking somebody out. But <laughs> I'm just saying, he does. Oh. Well, as the major fan that I am of Rohit, and I have been first and foremost always a fan of wrestling, even though now I'm what going on my fifth year in in building my own brand in the, the business. But uh, I met this guy, dude, down in Belleville Fairgrounds, I think it was. Um, we went for the Lucha Bro with me and my buddy, AJ, did. And if it wasn't for Rohit, uh, Ethan Page, and Jake something, I would not have kept going back to Glory Pro as many times as I have to build the relationship yeah. that I have with these men or with this man specifically. But Rohit's been one of the dudes that I have like paid attention to hardcore when he went to TNA, when he has done his stints with AEW. Uh, the guy is just amazing, man. I, I can't. And this is just a fun picture of this individual. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jake, uh, Ethan Page and Jake something, man. What great talent um, that are, that just actually hit, you know, um, you know, of course, they've been seen in, in places on TV here as well. But like I said, we're going to talk about one of the, uh, like I said, you, you've been seeing them, like I said, a glory pro. Glory yeah. Pro wrestling. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I anytime Rohit's on the card, I'm there in, at Glory Pro to watch him uh, devour people. And um, me and my some of my buddies, we, we dubbed ourselves the heel section uh, specifically for this man. <laughs> so, <laughs> Right. Right. So, do we have any good ones here right now? Let's see. Yes, I can steal this cake now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can steal this cake now. <laughs> do that. Hey, here's another. Let's see, night, night, great old guy. There you go. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Oh, let's let the fun begin. Yeah, you want the fun to begin? Yeah, let's go. Ahead I'm, re and... I'm ready. Yeah, you're ready for all of this. Every bit of it. Every bit of it. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, our, our guest here uh, for our second half of our night. He is uh, a former Impact Wrestling X Division champion. Uh, he is also a work with Glory Pro along with holding the Midwest Territories title. And he's also been seen on All Elite Wrestling. Everybody... Put your hands together for the one and only Rahit Raju. What up? How are you doing, sir? Good night, night. I'm good. Welcome to the False Count Everywhere podcast. It's good to see you here. And uh, nice you. I mean, yeah, you're looking good there, man. Good, I good appreciate night, it. Thank sir. you. <laughs> for it's, the meme. Uh, it's uh, um, Rohit Raju. Don't Rohit. worry. Right, Nobody gets it right. It, no matter how many times, whether it's on commentary, whether it's someone announcing me, they either do it, it, it's either Rajit, it's either Rahit. Uh, it's it's never what it's supposed to be. So uh, yeah, so don't worry about that. But I always have to correct people. Um, but it is the jaw jacking, back cracking. God created all men equal. Then he made me the sequel, Mocha Skin Manimal himself. Ravishing Rohi Raju, and that, that you know, just to clarify it. <laughs> yeah. So, Rohit, yeah, you guys have a great, great opening for your podcast, man. I, I was digging that, that was really, really creative. I liked it a lot. Oh Thank man, you thanks, much. brother. Thank yeah, you dude, much. you see, like some podcasts will go on, and there's, there's it's really good. I can't, I can't, you know really talk i started doing youtube clips and it's just me standing here talking just like this you know if it goes anywhere we'll we'll get off fancy but no that was a really good opening i liked that a lot very professional stood out good shit guys thanks oh, i'm man. a subscriber to that youtube channel by the way i am 100 oh, thanks man <laughs> i gotta throw my uh my ant-man uh um out of the theater ant-man reaction up on there uh pretty soon Ooh. here so we'll Ooh. see yeah I didn't like it. <laughs> Just spoiler what? alert. <laughs> well, wasn't a fan. Damn. And it's supposed to be the one that like kicks us off. Like for this new saga. It's the one that's supposed to Yeah, I mean, it was okay. It's not a bad movie. It just wasn't a great movie. It wasn't it wasn't even a good movie. It was just like very it was okay. Um and to kick off phase five, nah, that wasn't it. 
I wasn't it. We just we just watched Black Panther two for the first time. What two weeks ago? I think it was now, which yeah. I absolutely absolutely loved and adored. So yeah, I know, but, I know Reddit was kind of hot on it for a little bit, like negatively, but uh, I thought it was amazing. So I liked amazing. it. There was there was things. I think it was still missing that. Um, Obviously, it was missing Chadwick Boseman as that. It was missing that main role star power. Like, the whole supporting cast was excellent. Angela Bassett was amazing in that. Um, I can't remember. Is it Tina Cuarta that played Namor? I loved him in Narcos. Uh, and just, to me, it was it was fantastic. It was a great tribute, but it was missing that main star power. But there's you can't do anything about that, you know? you you Now you're building up that those characters and Shuri and stuff. But uh, I... Yeah, that for me at least it was missing, but it was still a great movie, and it was a very, very fitting tribute uh, to Chadwick Boseman, which was really cool. So, so for me, it was a beautiful like we were, we already knew how like Chadwick became, you know, how T'Challa becomes Black Panther and stuff. It was yeah. a new origin story, in my opinion, like building up to that new main character and who's going to yeah. take over the mantle. And so, for me, that that's what I enjoyed about it, and just the whole. I just loved it. I, I loved the whole concept of, but I'm also a big fan of Black Panther. So <laughs> yeah, I like. Yeah, I was a big fan of the first one and the character. Um, did you guys? I just watched a movie last night that blew blew me away. It was everything, everywhere, all at once with Michelle Yeoh? No, I've not seen it. Very. It's a multiverse style movie, comedy, action, super different, very unique, weird at times, but man. It was probably one of the best movies I've seen in a very, very long time. Excellent story, excellent message. It was, man, it was phenomenal. So if you guys ever get a chance, check that out. But it is weird. It gets very weird. It's very quirky. It's unique, but it, it the action is great. And it doesn't, once it starts, it doesn't slow down. And it's really good. Really good movie if you get a chance to check it out. It's different. Very different. Right on, right on. Yep. Have something to add, Ruby? I saw you lean forward a little bit. <laughs> no, 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 no! I just uh, you were you were getting into that, and I uh, I think uh, you were you were you're getting ready to say something about this about the meme about the uh, yes, yes, the meme, the pizza roll one, which is yeah, well, you're so far the top. <laughs> yeah, the top. What's it saying? <laughs> so brother here. and mom yells, "Pizza rolls are done for the kitchen." It's <laughs> tremendous. I like that. I love the cake one too. The cake one was really good because I'm a big fan of cake. So that was that was great. Yeah, keep them coming. I love that. That's a great with that pizza roll one. <laughs> I, I like the pizza roll one. So we brought you on to talk about wrestling and, and the love of wrestling. And um, last night, unfortunately, I was at a show doing my own thing, uh, getting my feet wet in, in the world, and I got my own talk show there at the show. So that was okay. awesome and fun. So Illinois Elite Wrestling is my home. Start territory, I mean, company, I guess. Um, and I'm trying to go for the, the route of like announcer and not announcer, well, commentator or manager. That's where I want to fill the links in. But how did you get your love for professional wrestling and, and, and what brought you into the business? Uh, when I was young, my dad was channel changing and I saw a video package of the, at least this was my earliest memory. It could have been something different. But what I remember, it was the Road Warriors versus the Koloffs in a Russian chain match. And I was like, man, what is this? You know, the Road Warriors were larger than life, just huge. And it was four dudes in the ring beating the crap out of each other and with these huge chains. And so my dad's like, this is pro wrestling. And then I started to get into, like, uh, the Hulkamania era with Hogan and Savage and back when it was WWF and had these larger-than-life characters. But I would also watch NWA, which, you know, turned into WCW, and it had, like, your next-door neighbor characters, whereas with the Horsemen, Dustin Rhodes, guys like Sting, Lex Luger, stuff like that. And I was hooked. I, I don't know. I, I can't tell you what it was about it. Maybe it was just, like, they were real-life superheroes, larger-than-life and, uh, you know, obviously I'm an 80s baby, so back then the action star were the huge jacked individuals um, and just that stuff. I was a kid, so it, it, I was enamored with it, and I never fell out of love with it. I, I used to uh, skip school in high school to go get tickets anytime wrestling, especially when those WCW would come into town. And we would always try to, uh, you know, catch the show and get first, you know, first uh, row tickets or something at least similar to that. 
uh, I, we would sneak up in the mezzanine at, at, at school and there was a crash pad and we would just do moves on each other all the time. Um, excuse me. Uh, after the shows, we would go behind the building and I would do like Duffy Rhodes impressions or the Macho Man, yeah, brother. And I would sit there and cut these promos and these voices in front of fans and the wrestlers walking out, just, you know, just trying to get a glimpse of like, your favorite wrestler. And I never fell out of it. I never fell um, out of love with pro wrestling. And I still love it. Uh, and then we used to do like backyard stuff. And we had a ring and I knew a guy that did it professionally. And uh, our referee at the time went and got trained. He found a place to go get trained. And the guy I, I knew, I said, hey, is this guy legit? His name was, the guy I ended up training with first was Xavier Justice. He was out of Davison at the time. Now he's at a Flint. And I knew a guy by the name of Alcatraz. And uh, Alcatraz and Monty Brown were really good friends. And Monty was from the same city. We're from the same city. So I would see Monty before he blew up, like just at local shows and stuff like that. He'd come in to where I would work and we would talk wrestling. And I asked them, said, hey, is this guy Xavier Justice legit? They said, yeah, you know, go get trained with him, learn your basics, and then try to branch out. So that's what I did. I went and trained with him for six months. Um, and uh, and I would still go training, but then I would go down to the House of Truth and pick Truth Martini's brain. Uh, and then I started going to, like, Ring of Honor seminars and camps. And anytime a wrestler would put on a seminar and I was close by, or even, you know, at least a few hours away, I would go to those. Uh, and then years, I think like I was five years into my career, maybe even a little bit later, there was a group of us Michigan guys. We started going up to Border City, the Can-Am Dojo, where Scott Demore was uh, running things. Um, but man, yeah, so by, uh, the way I got into it was we went to this Xavier Justice guy, just started training. We were training out of a barn. It was very old school, in a ring. It was brutal in the wintertime. Uh, and then when I got cleared, I started 2008. I had my first match at the end of 2008, and I got cleared in March of 2009. And I've been wrestling ever since then. Wow. Man. It's like a 15-year career, right? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I, I honestly today. lost track, so I stopped counting <laughs> a few years back. But, yeah. <laughs> wow. So, um. One, one, I mean, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of with the question I've got, and um, and I don't throw this out at many people, but because it's like sometimes they, t I mean, you pretty much know everything that there is about somebody, but uh, what is one little, uh, what is one little known fact uh, that no one else in the wrestling business or even the wrestling fans would even know about uh, about you? Oh man. I mean, it could be, be something like you got some type of weird, like weird uh, food concoction that nobody else will touch, or you know. No, I'm, I'm. Any of my friends will tell you I'm very basic when it comes to food, so it wouldn't be that. Man, I honestly, <laughs> I honestly don't know. I eat a lot of food, but I don't eat a lot of variety. If that makes sense. Um, man. Maybe you're in a hobby. I, maybe uh, maybe you like chick flicks. Maybe uh, <laughs> I guess something that a lot of people don't know is that I used to do mixed martial arts and jujitsu for uh, a few years, and I was a black sash in Wing Chun Kung Fu. I did Wing Chun Kung Fu for like I think it was like ten years, um, and I used to go to tournaments down in Kent. I used to go to the Arnold Classic. And I would do sparring tournaments down there and like form tournaments and weapon form and weapon tournaments and stuff like that uh, years ago. And I've all uh, that's when I would meet like um, the bodybuilders and the fitness models because I've always been a fan of that stuff. Um, so, yeah, I don't think a lot of people knew that I actually had a legit combat background. Um, so, yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people knew that. Uh, the wooden dummy, man, I would love to get in front of a wooden dummy again. If you've ever seen old Kung Fu movies, a wooden dummy is that big, big wooden fixture, and it would have two arms like this and a leg at the bottom, and, you know, they'd hit it and go, like, super fast, and it would always be a cool scene in the movie, like a good training montage. So, yeah, I don't think a lot of people know that about me. I, other things I would have said is, like, I'm a big nerd, but I think now, like, with me tweeting about movies or – uh, Star Wars or something like that. That's kind of well known or gaming. But yeah, I, I think uh, I had a I've had a legit combat background 
um, in the past. And when I first started wrestling, I was a big fan of like low key. So I, that's what I would wrestle. Like I would do a lot of arm bars. I would do a lot of shoot kicks and, or not shoot kick, not really kick people, but like I would do a lot of martial arts transitions. Now I'm more of a, I should be more of a character than trying to do that stuff. But yeah, that's, I'm, um, legit. I used to box, kickbox, grapple and like Wing Chun Kung Fu for years. So I don't think a lot of people know that about me. Yeah. Well, because I'm looking behind you and it's almost like, is that oh, a sword, sword rack? Or? Yeah, yeah. I have a bunch of swords. This is just one of my favorite ones. Um, my favorite sword that I have, though, is a Conan the Barbarian replica sword. Oh, and I have sick. that in my closet. And I love that. It's like one of my favorite ones. That's one of, one of probably top five movie of all time for me. Just that was like my first time seeing Arnold Schwarzenegger, and the first time I saw him, I said, I want to look like that. So, and then when I saw him, and then Bruce Lee, and like professional wrestlers, I've always been infatuated with lifting weights and fitness and just trying to sculpt my body. So, um, so Conan holds a special place in my heart. Nice, and going back to uh, you know, with, with your hobby, I mean, uh, you know, being, a, being an actual combat uh, competitor. And everything. I mean, everybody know, should know in this business if you're going to get inside the ring, have at least some type of combat or at least an athletic experience. Because I've seen guys that have come down the pike and try to make it like as they're like their first sport. And I'm like, are you nuts? I mean, do you know exactly what we do? I mean, mm -hmm. you've got to have some some type of athletic. That is, if you're going to get inside the ring and continue to bump and, and continue to strike and everything, because it could take a toll on you, and uh, you need to have, you need to make sure that, you, and I don't care, not not just in the gym either. You, you got to be, you know, football. I mean, do something football, <laughs> hockey, you know, something where you you have to make contact. You know, um, yeah, it, it's it, it could be physically demanding. So yeah, um, true. Yeah, it, it's awesome that you that, to know about. Uh, you know about your striking and everything else, because man, I could totally see that in you now that now that she said something. Yeah, I I miss it. I miss grappling, and I agree with you. You, I think uh, I don't want to say it's a problem, but it's a thing where a lot of guys, um, pro wrestling is, I guess, easy easier like accessible to people. And so people that are just fans, sometimes they'll get through the training. Sometimes the training isn't that great. And they, to me, pro wrestling, you should always be larger than life. You shouldn't look like the guy down the street or the guy behind the counter or something of that nature. And if you do, it should be like Dusty Rose is a perfect example. You should have something that makes you stand out. There's a lot of guys that get in the, the business nowadays, and I feel like they don't take it serious. They don't look like athletes. They don't move like athletes. Um, they, they're just in professional wrestling because they're fans. But when they're in the ring, they're not larger than life or I should say, I don't want to say safe because I don't want to insult anybody. But it's like right. there's a lot of work to be done. And I think sometimes people are like, oh, they're fine. And so like subpar work is being accepted so you can continue to get subpar work or less and sometimes that subpar work gets you know on a bigger stage and then it's like man what happened to uh expecting more from bigger things i guess you know what i mean does that make sense you know i'm not trying to say yeah, people absolutely. shouldn't be in the business but i think if you should be in it you yes a background there are some people that it, it like they've they've never had a this is their first sport um and they're just naturally athletic, get athletically gifted, and they catch on. But that's very, very rare. Uh, there are a few people that can look like they're not in shape but move in the ring and have a better gas tank than myself. So there are those exceptions, but those are, again, those are very rare. So I think sometimes wrestling does get a bad rap where you see a lot of guys that don't look like they should be in a ring at all. And then you see a bunch of fans or like the referee that looks like they should be the one in the ring. So I, I think I just wish people took it a little bit more seriously and it wasn't just a weekend thing. 
but you know, I can't fault the people that are just getting in it just for a weekend thing because it's like going to a rock and roll camp and, and you're, you get a chance to, or being in a bar band or something like that, where you're doing something that you love. And, um, you know, I, I don't want to take it away from anybody, but me, I love professional wrestling so much. I feel like everyone should take it serious and everyone should look like a professional wrestler and move like a professional wrestler and so forth. But that's just my opinion. Yeah. And I'll just say one of the things that I'll, I'll uh, hit it over to see for the next question. If your only experience in rest in athletics is this, do not try what we do inside the ring. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know it's, oh, I'm sorry. You know, right here. Okay. Yeah, so if you see this, <laughs> Right here, if that's all you do, work a little harder. That's all I'm saying. You know? so, I, I feel like a lot of times, too, nowadays, oh, tough love or constructive criticism gets taken a bad way. And so when you say something like something you just said right there, it could get turned into this guy's being a hater or how dare he tell someone. It's like, no, it's like. You want the best for things. We go back to Marvel movies, how we were just talking about it. And I have a friend that, like, he's like, well, I liked it, this Ant-Man movie. I I, uh, I thought it was fine. And he's like, I just, you know, I go in there, and I just want to be entertained. Okay, granted, that's fine That's that's if that's what you want. But Marvel has already set the bar. You know what I mean? So right. if you set the bar with Fantastic, I don't – you're going to have a few stinkers. But as of late, their track record has been subpar. So stop giving, letting some, stop giving subpar a pass because you're just going to get more subpar. So, and I think that's with professional wrestling too. You got to got a lot of guys that that all they know is that that game, that game and controller. They get the ring. They're always wearing t-shirts when they wrestle. Uh, they're moving around sloppy. They're doing things that they saw a, a really good wrestler do, but they're doing it half-assed. And so you are bringing when those new people come to watch the show and they see that they're like, this shit sucks. And then they, they don't end up spending money on another professional wrestling show because that was their first experience. And it's like, you don't want to bring them into the world of professional wrestling with something that is not that good. You know, you want it. If you, 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 you have a product you want to promote, promote it, but, Try to be good at it and practice and get better and evolve. Don't just accept bare minimum. You know, I, I just don't, I, I'm not a fan of that, but that's just me. And, and like you said too, I agree with what you're saying, but unfortunately stuff like that, people just, they take that tough love and constructive criticism the wrong way nowadays. Yeah. You know, a lot of times coming from my, from my mouth, it probably usually does. So. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> So I know for myself, I'm sitting at the ripe age of 36, right? Mm -hmm. And been in the business now four years. And, and my whole stint at first was just the fact that I talked about wrestling on Facebook. Uh, I have a, a, a Facebook group that I started for my buddies. Um, and now it's like my big thing is called We Talk Wrestling. Um, and I'm trying to make it larger than life and, and make it a new source for people to find information or just to talk about their stuff. But then I got the opportunity to actually get into the business and um, start to learn it from the back end side of life, which I've always wanted to do. For you, you start from what I was reading on Wikipedia, which you and I had the conversation. Wikipedia might be might be true. <laughs> so, <laughs> no crap. But uh, uh, you were you were in the later of the twenties when you actually got your debut in, in, yeah. in wrestling. And most guys are really starting to do the grind, you know, out of high school and stuff. Um, do you think like you'd be in a different position now if you would have started maybe a little bit sooner? I kind of, it's a double-edged sword. It's 50, 50, because I think maybe I would have, it would have been a different era, but I don't know if I was mature enough back then to handle, because it was way rougher back then as far as like, you know, tough love and, and learning and on hard knocks and paying dues. I think it's a lot easier for people to get over and get and get booked in a sense. If you have, you could be wrestling for like a week. And if you have a, a GIF that goes viral or a clip, or you know somebody, and then the internet jumps on that bandwagon, you're going to be wrestling better shows than I will, you know, and you might not be as good or have that experience. I think back in the day, 
in that era, which I missed. I came up in it just at the tail end of it. Hard work and, and, and stuff of that nature and just talent. You started that's that stuff would get noticed. And it still does kind of not I'm not I'm not trying to, you know, crap on anybody. It still gets noticed, but sometimes it does and sometimes it's a lot of like popularity um and you know, internet mob mentality. But I do feel like uh uh, uh stuff uh, I, you know, I think I would have maybe, you know, just because I'm a hard worker and I think I, I would have shined through and I, I still have. I've gotten um, way farther than I ever thought I would. And I'm very thankful for that. But I also I'm happy I started a little bit later because I was more mature to put up with a lot of BS, knew how to handle it and um, maybe would have made some very stupid decisions or said some stupid things or or done stupid things with a younger uh, and experienced me. But with um, having the route that I went, I don't have any regrets. I'm glad, uh, I am, um, where I'm, I, I don't say, I don't want to say where I'm at. I always want to be bigger and better, but I am happy that the path that I did take, I, I think I'm, I'm, I was way more mature by the time I was in my late twenties and starting. I mean, I think that's, a, that's probably the best damn answer I've ever could hear for that. Cause as I am, you know, mature now too. I think that's the same principle because I'm looking at it more as I want to be in this business because I love this business. I want to promote yeah. this business. I want to develop this business. I'm not as athletic as you. I'm kind of rounder, but I have the gift of gab. And that's one of the reasons I've always been attracted to you is the fact that your mic work and stuff. So that's where I think I can contribute to helping guys and, and helping myself get farther is the fact that and it's really funny because I have to thank a high school teacher for this. Uh, Doc Preston made me take speech class, and I never wanted to take speech class. But because of taking speech class, I've been able to be able to articulate better and, and build the the funness and make myself bigger than I am for because of that just with my voice. So, uh, dude, I love it. It is. And I think be, the gift of gab is a lost art. I think I see a lot of guys that will cut subpar promos and fans will be like, oh, my God, he, that was the best thing I ever heard. It's like, man, if that's the best thing you ever heard. You should look into some of those old 70s, 80s, 90s, early 2000 promos. Those were actual money makers or the stuff that Cody and Sammy and Roman have been doing as of late. That's like, man, that's like next level stuff. That's like main event stuff. That's the type of stuff that transcends professional wrestling. That's been missing for a very long time. Um but yeah, I, 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 and another thing too, I see a lot of younger guys, um, especially in professional wrestling. Professional wrestling is one of these things that a lot of and outsiders can get love in. A lot of nerds, dorks, people that weren't popular in high school can come into professional wrestling and get that attention and find an audience and start to be popular. And I, I think some people don't know how to handle that especially younger people where sometimes it's too much too soon. If you've never had that power, if you've never had that attention, you've never had that, um, that love from people. And now all of a sudden you're getting it and it just kind of swarms you. Some people instantly start to use that power and use that attention and use that influence in a very crappy way and think highly of themselves. I've seen people that I used to know that were, just trying to make it on the indies and they caught a break and now they're much higher than me. But when I see them, they act like they don't know me and stuff like that. It's like, man, come on guys. Like I remember when you were setting up rings and more power to you. You're not now you're making a, a good load of money, but always remember where you come from. And I think some people, they just, they're very immature. They're very, and, not, and I'm not saying that in a bad way as an insult, but you're just immature. You're ignorant. And you're not, you don't have that life experience, know how to handle all of that attention, that power and that fame. And sometimes it just, you know, they're in their own bubble and they haven't been humbled and hopefully they will get it before they are humbled in a very horrible way or they do something stupid to where it ruins their career or something of that nature. So, yeah, but going back to what you're saying, man, the promo was a lost art, in my opinion. Paul Heyman, another guy that's that's great. <clears throat> MJF, when he's cooking, Ricky Starks, guys like that. Jericho still brings it. So you don't see a lot of that. So that's why I'm a big fan of talking and just being able to cut a promo. Sooner or later, hopefully somebody will get it and they'll see, like, this guy is money. But until then, I'm a hidden gem. That you are, my friend. That you are. I will stand by that 100%. I appreciate it. Yeah. 
the way I laugh at that is because I seen some of the promos you've cut on AEW, and uh, you know, what I mean, like, I mean, to me, it's good stuff. It's simple. It gets to the point. It's basic. Everybody should get it. And I mean, it's good. It's good the way you, the way your presence and everything else. I mean, that's just it's, it's really good stuff. Like I said, the art of the promo is something that's needed. You know, and uh, I mean, the only reason why, you know, you'll need a manager is if you can't cut a good promo or, you're, or if you sound really bad on the mic. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, um, that's when you'll need the manager to, to be that mu- that mouthpiece for you. Uh, so you can just go in and kick butt and then they can speak, you know, on your behalf. So uh, um, as far as getting into other territories where you're working and everything, um, one of the areas I'll touch on first is around the Chicago area and uh, your uh, your time with uh, all American wrestling up there. I mean, I mean there's been uh, good names, uh, you know, really good names have come out of there. Like I said, that also wrestling in other areas, but you know, like, you know, Jake something, Josh Alexander, even Jake Lander. I've seen that's been up there too. And uh, I've seen him a few times on shows. I did, I guess, roughly about uh, like four or five years ago when he's moving around. Of course, Eddie Kingston, um, which is uh, all you know, AEW on a re- on a regular basis, even pay per views or or the pre shows, whatever. But he's doing it. So, um, so uh, what stories and success um, with your time uh, with AEW? I mean, are you still working there, or uh, are you just moved on? And, and if you have, what are some of the great stories and successes that you've taken away from AEW? I was actually just there Friday. Uh, oh. I actually got a concussion there too, which sucks. <laughs> but, uh, oh. um, yeah, it was myself and Carl taking on uh, Jossie and Tankman, which was fun. I love AAW. Danny Daniels, that's always been the spot when I first started getting into the business because the who's who was there. And if you really look at everybody that came from there, Seth Rollins, Colt Cabana, CM Punk was there. Just – Everybody that was anybody during that era stepped foot in AAW. So that to me is one of the best places to work and still is. And I owe, I I give Danny a lot of credit because he saw something in me before anybody else did. And he let me start, we did this whole thing with these promos I was doing. And I had a really good heel run there. Unfortunately, a con- uh, schedule conflict started happening. Like I would start going to like the AEW darks and it was, they would fly me out that Friday. And so I would end up having to not go to AAW. So I haven't been able to go back there as much as I want. I want to go back down in March, but again, I think that's the weekend of like the ring of honor tapings and AEW dark. So I might not be doing that. I'm going to see if they can fly me out of Chicago, if I can catch it quick enough. Cause I would like to do, a lot of AAW shows just because the crowd, the crowd is great. The talent is great. You get a chance to wrestle some of the best people out there. And when you're there, you get to grow into a really good talent. So um, I, I, I have nothing but great things to say. I've got a chance to work with some of the best people there. I got a chance to tag with Carm. We got the hustle and muscle. That's when that really started to grow. I think that's when glory pro started to see us, you know, I can't remember who did it first, but, Maybe it was Glory Pro that we did it at first. I can't remember. But uh, I just AAW is a place that will always hold a special place in my heart. Um, and I, I'm, if, if it's up to me, I'm always going to be there wrestling and raising hell and getting booed out of the building and putting on great matches. It's just – it's a great spot. And if you haven't watched it, you honestly need to pay attention to it because of some of the best wrestlers on TV and off TV that aren't on TV – uh, work there so give that place a look they've been their history is rich just do a deep dive in it and you'll see exactly what i'm talking about yeah absolutely like so you can make some great points and some great names you know that especially with seth rollins you know um a guy that that a uh, total workhorse of course uh, previous previously known as tyler black but um yeah just a total workhorse uh, with him. And then, like I said, a lot of great talent coming out of that area. Of course, CM Punk, of course. Yeah. Uh, very young. CM Punk. A lot of his kids from the Black and Brave Academy wrestle there as well. Uh, Seth and Merrick uh, are, like, um, the trainers. And you'll see a lot of his kids uh, who are fantastic 
fantastic students and they're a great talent. And I've, I've had a chance to be in the ring with plenty of them, but they're from the black and brave Academy. And that's like Seth's place. Yeah. I mean, and definitely be, be careful of that concussion too, because that is no joke. My last one was about four and a half years ago by uh, going out too close uh, out of the ring and then coming back, snapping back in my back of my head, smacked against the, uh, the, the, the side foundation of the ring with no padding. And uh, yeah, so I was, yeah, let's see, I was kind of out of work for about a few weeks because <laughs> I was so sensitive to light. So yeah, definitely be careful with that. And uh, um, that, like I said, I appreciate yeah. you coming on tonight, you know, sticking this out because I don't know. Oh yeah. Tonight. Yeah. I appreciate it. I'm, I love just talking shop with people. It wasn't like it was mild. There was supposed to be a spot where I was going to get power bombed on Takarum, but I just missed him, you know, and instead of uh, taking a clean bump, uh, Tankman was still trying to hold on to me as if I was going to hit Karam, but so he was still holding my legs, and the way I fell, I just fell straight down, and some of the mats were um, – moved around or thin so the back of my head just smoked the the i think i don't know if it was wood or not i have a big knot in the back of my head uh, but i knew as soon as yeah. that happened it hit my reset button and oh. i didn't know what was going on after that i kind of remembered the rest of the match and i didn't i i got turned around so I thought I was on one side of the ring and I was on the other. So when I got up, I was on the wrong side for the tag and I could hear the fans yelling, they're on the wrong side. But like, <laughs> I didn't know where I was. <laughs> and then I remember at the end, I was supposed to tank was supposed to pop me up and I'm supposed to duck his spinning back elbow, catch him with the knee. And he threw me up and I thought we were going for a power bomb. So I tried to like jump on his shoulders for a Rana and then, you know, we talked it while we were out in there, but I didn't, I didn't know what was going on. And I guess when I tried to tell Karam that I was hurt, he said, I said something to him, but it was all mumbled. Like he couldn't understand what I was saying. And he's like, oh man, he's messed up. And I guess he gave the <laughs> X sign to the ref and they checked my vision and stuff like that. At first I couldn't remember what I ate for breakfast and I was very out of it. And then when I woke up Saturday, I was hurting pretty bad. I was still kind of out of it. And today I went to the gym and I was kind of out of it at the gym while I was lifting, but I feel fine now. I feel better now. Um, I'll, I'll hit, hit up the gym tomorrow, see how I feel. And then I, I have wrestling this weekend. So we'll see. I should be fine. It was a mild one. I've had it before. Uh, I hope, you know, you, you want to avoid that stuff at all costs, but it just happens. It was an accident and no blame on anybody. It just you know, we got to finish the match. They took care of me. Uh, apparently, I guess I fell again and hit my head during the match, which I don't remember that. But my friends were like, yeah, something happened where you got pulled down and you just kind of I kind of ate shit and smoked my head again. <laughs> I was like, man, I don't even remember that. So, yeah, it sucked, unfortunately, but I'll be fine. Good to go. So during what I claim, because I'm actually a fan of the pandemic era. I, I will admit it right now. I'm a fan of the pandemic era and getting to see wrestling stripped all the way down and all that stuff to just kind of bare bone it. Uh, no fans there, none of that. Um, but at that time, you were with Impact Wrestling and you become, I'm not going to say it as the X Division, well, I'm going to say it this way, but you're not the X Division cha champion because you are the Flex Division champion 100%. Always there will be. That's right. And during that time, you you were fighting some amazing thing, you know, amazing guys in, in that division and stuff. Who was one of those challengers, or which one of those matches stood out to you at that time as just the banger that you wanted for to be known at that flex division champion? Uh, without a doubt, the main guy. Not only did he boost my confidence as a wrestler, but I learned so much from him. It was TJP. When I – there was – I was just eating crap at Impact for so long, and I knew how good I was, and I never thought they'd give me a chance, never. And I remember when I won, I, w I was reading the, the sheet, and they were like, hey, you're going over for the exhibition title. I thought it was a rib. I was like, ah, they're ribbing me. They're not going to do that. And 
It was with, you know, it was against TJ and Chris Bay, another dude that I absolutely loved working with. I miss, I miss TJ and Chris. I miss everybody at Impact. I love the Impact roster. One of the best rosters ever. Just cool people all around. But I learned so much from TJ because TJ is very underrated. He's probably one of the smoothest, best wrestlers out there. And he's so smart. And the way I structure my matches, the way I move, move, the way I work, the way I think, a lot of it changed because of him. I wish our matches could have had been in front of a, a, a crowd because I felt like we were just putting in some work. And, man, I, I still keep in touch with him. He was trying to get me in New Japan Strong. I am I'm, I'm, have a really good rapport with Rocky, but, like, New Japan Strong is going through kind of like a makeover and stuff. So hopefully I'll be able to get back or get there sooner or later. But, uh, man, just – Working with TJ, he's the, the main guy that I just owe so much to and so much of my confidence because I was, like, just beat up and I was just mentally beat up and I was not happy. And as soon as Impact flipped switch, I was ready to go. And TJ helped me with those matches. He really helped me with my confidence. And so hats off to him. Nothing but props. And Chris Bay as well because during that whole thing when it started – he was there, too, and just working with him. Chris is such a ridiculous talent, future professional wrestling. I'm so happy for him and Ace right now. They've been killing it. Went over to New Japan, um, killed the Juniors Tag Tournament, and I'm just, it, I just, it swells my heart to see them get love and, and do so well because those guys are great. But TJ, hands down, a huge, huge, huge help for me, and that would be the guy right off the top of my, right off the top of the hat. Right off the top of my head. Oh man, TJ's one of my top guys. Like I could watch that man paint all day in that ring. Like, yeah. So, and you guys killed it. Like your matches with him were phenomenal. And Chris Bay too, of course. Uh, you guys were. Just, I'm always been a fan of the smaller guys when it came to uh, the art form of putting it together from not so many flips, but also the mat game. And when you can bring yeah. it all together and make that perfect world of that that harmony. Uh, and that's what you guys were doing with that, that X Division Championship at that time through the pandemic. And with no fans, man, come on. You guys were – you were stomping it out. I appreciate that. That was my favorite time in pro wrestling. It was the first time at Impact that I got to be me. And I wanted to be something different because everyone was like, oh, I remember fans were like, this guy's not X Division material. I didn't want to be the same guy that – held the belt last or before or a year where people think, oh, well, the matches always – I mean, the matches were fine. They were, we're going to go out there and put on banger matches, but I want to be that personality. I want to be that guy that people did not like that but was entertaining and that you wanted to see lose, but he always found a way to win. And that's what – when Impact and I, we that's what we did. And they said, hey, this is what we wanted. And I said, cool, I'm going to do this. Is it cool if I implement this? They said, yep. And they started to trust me because they could see that I was, you know, comfortable and I was I was uh, doing what I needed to do, and I was I was giving results, and it made me feel so good, and it was it was so much fun. And then just like at the X Division match when it was um, who was it? It was myself, Chris, Petey, Josh, Ace, and I think Trey. And if I'm, yeah, if Trey I'm forgetting, if I'm forgetting someone. Uh, I apologize, but man, I had so much fun. And I remember that was the first time we had a crowd back in Nashville and man, I had a blast. And I remember just thinking when they first told me I was going to be part of that, I knew those guys were going to be doing outstanding stuff. So I was like, well, what would Rohit do? Rohit ain't trying to do all that. Rohit's trying to win sneaky. So I thought about the rope. I had them order me one of those clothes hooks that you get like the shirts off, like the high racks. So I would try and fish the belt off that way. <laughs> and I was just, and I remember Jordan Grace had powerlifting chalks. I was like, hey, can I use your powerlifting chalk to climb this rope? So I did, you know, would do that. And I remember when I got back there, everyone was like, dude, you were the star of that match. And I was like, that made me feel really good because that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to stand out. And that was my whole X Division run. I wanted to be a character more than a wrestler. I always want to be a wrestler. I can always go in the ring and do whatever. That's yeah, that's a given. But being a character and remembered as that, that's what I wanted to do. And I felt like I succeeded at that. Nice. And on a side note here, I yeah, yeah, 
yeah, how much better the business would be if others would have the attitude that Roe Heat does. Yes, exactly. That, that goes a long way, I'm telling you, with, with Herb Simmons mm-hmm. putting that out there. And to having the that great attitude. promoter of SICW right there, uh, down there in St. Louis. Okay. Yes, sir. Is that, uh, is that the place where Dak is champ? No. 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 Okay. Um, where, where is Dak champ at? I, I don't know. I thought, I thought Dak did work with Goal at Glory Pro, too. No, well, I know Dak did for like three years back when they had the NWL, the National Wrestling League. And then they had like a like a St. Louis division and then a Kansas City division. He was their Kansas City champion. Um, but I there don't was, know what. There's a spot in oh man, is it Lennox, Kansas? There's a spot this Saturday. It's the first time we're supposed to be going to it. Um, but I may or may not because I the Ring of Honor tapings and AEW tapings are now going to be that that weekend. So I got to see how that pans out. But. Uh, there's this man, and, I, and I, it's my first time being in the promotion, so I, I thought, you know, I already forgot the name of it. I thought it was at NSW or something, but Dak's a champ, and um, the guy, I, I think a guy named Strider runs it, but it's very old school like that, too. Oh my gosh, man. Gosh, yeah, not now it's good. Yeah, it, it may be one of the newer promotions out here, too. Um, I'm thinking of it, it's just route there's too many letters, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, well, like I said, uh, you know, TJP with me is uh, I like him in WWE so much that he's uh, his uh, theme is the ringtone on my phone. So you know. nice. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, I have Starless. Uh, <laughs> that, that's about as that that's far as nerd gaming I'm getting here because I can't really block out of past the N64 era. So or you know or PlayStation Two, whatever. But right, uh, good systems. <laughs> Great systems, of course. Yep. Oh, well, oh, wrong. What are you button. doing? There we go. I don't know. <laughs> I, I hit wrong buttons. Excuse me. Sorry. Uh, what I was doing that for is because we have come to our por- portion of the evening where we've we got this going on. Yes, it's wrestling's gold memes, everybody. We're getting ready to uh, throw down some uh, some exciting ones. Hopefully, uh, yeah. We got a few funny ones, but how about how about this one off your size? But, uh, <laughs> That's what I made. Mean. <laughs> <laughs> That's my that attempt looks at it. A... Like it belongs. That looks like it's. Yeah. Dude, I hate that sword. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm oh so glad. Yeah. There's so glad it's gone. That's, there's somebody in this room that watches that. <laughs> you say, oh, he, he hate the sword. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I, I made that because of my my disapproval of Vince and, and the sword because uh, it just made Drew look like a doof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Drew, man, the master of the WWE universe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. What's our next one here? Ah, oh, yes. Uh, the shield. This is when the shield attacked the rock, and the first time Roman Reigns and the rock crossed paths, and he and the rounds goes, I was also there too, idiots. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> there he is. Oh, I'm going to turn off the uh, names here. That's the only thing that's getting in the way. I want to make sure that nothing gets hidden here. And our next one. Oh, yeah. Oh, why does everyone woo when Rick Flair comes out? Because it's the law. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that if you go to any wrestling promotion, it doesn't matter where you go. Usually, there is somebody wooing in the crowd. <laughs> and dumb. Sometimes yeah. they don't even know why they're wooing. <laughs> That's a fact too. <laughs> yeah, which is a shame because you should know why you're wooing. But you know, whatever. It's almost like a trigger when someone sneezes. If you, someone hears a chop, everyone's doing it. <laughs> so, yep. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Yeah. Hey, let's see our next one here. Yeah, when the priest called you out for snip. For sinning, like you saw him at the same strip club. <laughs> that, that That's pretty good. Super good. That's really good. <laughs> I like that a lot. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. And we've got one more here for you. Nobody, and of course, my drunk uncle at a family <laughs> gathering. Brutal. <laughs> That's good. Oh, too. Sean. Oh, Sean. 
Oh, Sean, he's come a long way. Oh, uh, but I don't know. I can't really say that much for Marty, though. I, I still think Rohit's uh, mm. meme of the night was the pizza rolls one for me. I... That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> Central States Wrestling probably is the group you were talking about. Yeah, I think so, yeah. States wrestling. That's right. Deck is champ there. I keep yep, forgetting. That would be it then. That would be it. There, uh, there's a big show there this Saturday. Uh, right on. Awesome. Oh, so, <laughs> I don't know. Did I, did I do that? Oh, I did that. Okay. No, never mind. Sorry. I'm, I'm hitting things again. My bad. Um. So, uh, as far as going back to impact and the whole pandemic thing, and this was pretty much across when we were trying to keep wrestling on TV. I mean, God, I hated the, the, the dreaded Thunderdome in WWE and the, you guys had to endure all that because the whole, and the whole reason is because I cannot, it feels like I'm just practicing for whatever. If I'm actually in the ring trying to do something, and there's not really a crowd there, okay? So to me, it's different. I need it. But did you did you feel that you had to work harder uh, to get hyped up for like an empty arena than you did when there was a large house crowd? And if so, uh, what uh, what exactly did you do to help get you into the mode uh, of getting hyped and just trying to get out there to put on a, a best match, whether it be five or five thousand, as some of us would say. The first time I remember we went out there and had the first match and I was like, oh, this is brutal. But as soon as I got hit with a hard chop, I was like, oh, go time. You know, it kind of woke me up. And then it was like riding a bike. And then I think the longer it went, the more I concentrated on being a TV star, if that makes sense. The wrestling was there, but you didn't have the crowd to really feel what was working and what wasn't. So the personality got turned up times 10 for me. Finding cameras to hit, saying something to the camera, the facial, uh, the Shakespeare part of it really came into play. And that's where I felt like I shined. And then anytime there was a backstage segment, make sure you nail that. Anytime there's a promo, if they say, hey, you want to do promos? Yes, I want to do a promo. Because then you're starting to become, again, like I was saying, you're becoming that character. And that's what we remember most. There's so many great professional wrestlers out there nowadays. And there's so many great professional wrestling matches. A lot of times they, they come and go because you don't remember them because there's another one the next week. You remember the moments. You remember the the words and the phrases and the characters. Uh, we still talk about Ric Flair. Why are people wooing? It's not because he was... You know, we don't we don't talk about his matches like that. We still talk about his matches, but we talk about that's a character trait for Ric Flair, the woo. Uh, we still talk about the what's for Steve Austin uh, because Stone Cold said so. The if you smells, uh, stuff like that. Uh, John Cena, oh, it, it, the joke is still, oh, you can't see him. There's a picture of uh, somebody. Uh, you know what I mean? That joke is like dead. <laughs> It's so dead, but it's still there because that transcends professional wrestling. You still talk about the macho, man. Yeah, you talk about it. You know what I mean? You talk about the ooh yeahs, the Slim Jims. Uh, those are characters. Those are moments. And so when there was no crowd there, and man, I, I'm not going to lie, having a crowd, I would rather have a crowd than not because it's like the sixth man in any – they talk about in any sport, that energy, you can be having the worst day, but as soon as you walk that curtain – and that energy is there, whether they're booing or they're cheering, you just you kick it into another gear. There's nothing like that. So, but I would concentrate on being, I would concentrate on the moments. I would concentrate on being a character and finding cameras and how to express myself to the crowd that was watching out there since there wasn't one watching in here. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? For me, it does, because like I said, mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm actually a fan of the pandemic era because how well it just stripped down everything and just allowing you guys to really form a new style almost within the same style. Like you didn't change anything, but you had to go back to the roots of what made wrestling wrestling. And I just thought it was beautiful for the most part. I think specifically Impact was one of them that definitely hit the nail on the head when during the pandemic for me. I thought so. I thought we were very underrated in Impact um, at the time. Oh, very, I mean – 
in my opinion, Impact's still very underrated with all the big companies going around. Oh, yeah. uh, but what WWE did, and I know Ruby and I've had this conversation m- many of times. I liked the Thunderdome for the oh. sense of watching these wrestlers. Like I said this to Sid Holland what in the car ride yesterday because we were talking about this when we were going to Illinois Elite Wrestling to do our show. And we were talking about it. And I'm like, dude, think about being that kid making that creative star in a WWE video game. Okay, you got those stupid cardboard little people and everything else. And then when you brought that to the WWE in real life, now you had the video game in real life and you're just watching Drew McIntyre, uh, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, doesn't matter who you put in the, the, the scenario, be their created superstar in real life. Think about how much they had to go through to get there, even yourself. you know. I commend every one of you women, males, in that, that position. That, that shit you guys did should be commended and respected because uh, I don't know what anyone else doing it. Yeah, it gets – it's like anything, it's done. So it's kind of forgot about. You know what I mean? And it's cool that you brought it out, but like now it's a thing. Like when you said the Thunderdome, I forgot all about it. And that's a, and it's unfortunate. It's unfortunately how quick time moves on nowadays. It's, it's even more, and I don't know if it's just because of everything, all it's sensory overload. So our attention spans are shorter, but like it's already forgotten about. So, and it, and it sucks, but yeah, that, that time, I honestly thought Impact was doing something very, very different. And I thought their shows were very interesting. And it's not just because I worked there. Because I remember when I first got there, I was like, this is terrible. Like some of the stuff they were doing. I was like, man, some of this stuff is just bad. Some of these guys just don't want to do anything. They're just there to get a paycheck. I remember thinking that like, God, dog. But uh, it got a lot better when it like under new management and like when a lot of older people that were there were gone and uh, people that wanted to make the product something special. Those were the people in the driver's seat and also in the ring. Uh, but yeah, I thought Impact did a great job and, and it was such a weird time, the pandemic period. It was just, it was oh, different. And the fact that I, you know, we got to live through that. That's, that's a tale in itself. And that's always going to be a story years from now. So yeah, pretty cool. Different, weird, odd, but still pretty cool. And um, big up to anybody that wrestled at any promotion during that time. I mean, I I can't disagree at, at all. Um, but <clears throat> going back to now where we reside in, in the Midwest, and I'm only about two hours away. Ruby's in St. Louis. Um, around the St. Louis area, you, you, you wrestle in one of the premier wrestling companies down there. Uh, Glory Pro, uh, you def- who did you defeat to become the Midwest Territory Championship? And who gave you the challenge to maintain that? Like, what was your biggest match out of the Midwest Territory Championship? Oh, uh, man, I don't. Oh, it was Myron Reed. Because I think there was a tournament, and it was Myron and myself, and I, I believe it was at a cage. And then... Karm ended up, I really liked the the finish to it. It was old school style. Well, I guess old school, but it was, to me, it wasn't old school. It was recent, but it was like 2000. I think I saw it like in a, oh God, who who did it? Anyways, we had a cage match. Myron hit his finish. Goes to, Karm blocks the door. Myron goes to climb it. As he's climbing it, Karm catches him on his shoulders. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. And I sneak out the door. And Garm slams him against the cage. He eats shit. New Midwest Territory champion. Uh, that's how that went down. I can't remember a memorable match as far as as Midwest champion. I, I just loved being at Glory Pro. That's one of my favorite promotions. Uh, Elgin started it, and it was like it was like <clears throat> who who was going there. And then after a while, you know, after he uh, that stuff happened with him and he left, uh, Dan and Kev really resurrected it. And right now, especially after the pandemic, it started off hot. 
it has not cooled down, and I honestly hope it never does. I think one of my favorite matches there, man, there's been so many, but I think it was the one I had with Rocky Romero, at least one of my recent ones. There was another one I had, and it was, I think it was in Alton, Illinois, and it was actually against Jake Something. It was right before I turned heel, and Jake Something was the Crown of Glory champion. And we had just a, a lot of people were still sleeping on me. And it was still one of my favorite matches of, of Jake, or probably of our thousand matches that we've had together. And I remember the crowd was just electric. They were standing on their feet. People were chanting tap. I remember I hit him with a, I can't even remember how I caught it. His, his finisher at the time was the, the, um, the go behind um, the, the, the clothesline behind the back. Larry behind the back. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Oh, boy. Jesus. <laughs> and a long day. But he goes to hit the lariat behind the back, and I catch him in the cross face. And the crowd's just like, oh, my God, oh, my God, tap, tap, tap. And he goes to get the rope, and I kick off, and we roll back into the center. And they're chanting tap, tap, tap. And his finishing move – he had two finishing moves. It was that and the Rikishi driver. He wasn't doing the black hole slam at the time. And he scoops me up, boom, and hits the Rikishi driver, one, two, three. And I remember the match. After the match, we got a standing ovation. And it was such a great feeling. That's probably another one of my favorite matches. But as far as Midwest Territory Champ match, I don't remember. I think maybe when I lost it in 2D1, it was such a cool moment because for 2D, because 2D works so hard and St. Louis loves her. And it was it was cool to pass the torch to her and and just see her have fun with it. So I thought that was cool because I had a great time with it. And then we were starting to do hustle and muscle stuff. And that's when we brought Xavier with us. Um, so, yeah, that was – it was I think maybe passing the torch to her was probably my favorite moment as Midwest Territory Champ. I cried that day, by the way, because you lost it. I was in the – I was there when that happened. Oh, yeah. I was, <laughs> I, I was so mad. No, not really. I liked – my wife and I are big friends of hers too. Uh, but I mean, I'll be honest. Like I said, Belfair Fairgrounds, I think it was like 2018. Um, me and my buddy, AJ, AJ right here, this guy that, that's talking about the match that you had with Dan Housen. Um, we well, went down funny. there. Yeah. We match. went down to Belfair just to, to w- literally, and no disrespect to you or anyone else on that card. We went there for the Lucha Brothers, 100%. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to anybody I ever. I don't blame you there. Those guys are amazing. So to get to meet them and all that stuff, but I I will never forget the fact that you, Jake, and Ethan like kept me coming back. And Jake fought. Uh, oh, who did he fight? It was a no disqualification match. They went all over. AJ Gray. AJ, yeah, AJ, AJ and him Gray. Just, yep. just kicked the crap out of each other, and something has the best black hole slam bar none besides Hands this. Down. <laughs> Hands down. Yeah, like, it really does. So. Uh, but no, dude. Yeah, I was mad when Trudy won. <laughs> oh, I, I, my match with Ethan was fun too because we just went out there and just had a blast. And the whole beginning of the match was us just ad living and having fun. And that was when I drank the beer. You guys had the beer. Yep. And I mean, it was it was before COVID, so I drank the beer. And I remember when I got in the ring, he's like, "No, no, 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 no! You got to walk a straight line." Yeah. I'm pretty sure this guy, he just had, he could be inebriated. I'm not wrestling an inebriated individual. So I'm walking the straight line and that's when he puts me in the headlock and we just, we start messing around and it was, it was just so much fun. And that's a guy I'm very proud of right there. Good for him. You talk about working from the ground up, building his brand via internet, via blogs. Um, and now he's like a main player, at AEW and he's so good on the mic and he's so good in the ring I'm so happy for him that he's finally getting the love and attention that he should be. Big props to him. Big props to Dan Housen, too. That was probably my favorite, another one of my favorite matches as Midwest Territory Champion. The crowd was so red hot for him. And both of us just knowing how to work a crowd and playing off that crowd. And then finally, when we finally lock up and start moving, the crowd's already invested. It's like, well, we already got them. So that was another one of my favorite matches. So thanks for reminding me of that, too. <laughs> Because uh, that's one of the ones I saw as as your as you being champion, and of course, that being done at the uh, historical South Broadway Athletic Club down down in St. Louis. Yeah. That building is like over 120 years old, and I've gotten the, the privilege to wrestle in that building uh, for a, 
for a couple of years and uh something about that mystique in that building here that for some reason anywhere else i'm i'm cool as a cucumber you know when i you know i i'm in my game and everything else but it's something about that building just i guess because of nostalgia i get like butterflies and i like like want to you know i feel like my stomach's turning like like man why am why am i so tense up because because of maybe the history that's in the because i'm a big history guy when it comes to you know things that's happened you know in the world of sports professional wrestling whatever however you want to call it it's just the way that i am so uh but no but that but i saw that match and it was very 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 entertaining i will say good, good. and uh because this, this, because this guy that I do the show with every week, he keeps me to be over stuff with him on it, and uh, he's not know, the biggest always, fan of Dan Hauser. Yeah. <laughs> I was this yeah. close to buying his coffee, so you know that you should close. buy it. You should buy it. <laughs> I don't know. I, I kind of like the Rock and Roll Espresso myself because I'm a big reader. Oh, that's a great. Well, that's fantastic. <laughs> rock and Roll Espresso, man. That's that's amazing. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. So, so like I said, you you've been in the game about fifteen years. So you, you've accomplished a lot. Um, so, if you had to pick one thing that you would just say, you know, this is the feather in the hat. This is my crowning achievement. And you know, of all this time that I've been in the business, if you could think about that, what would that moment or achievement be? It'd be ex exhibition run. You know, that was right now my crowning achievement. That's the thing, though. I don't want to hang my cap on that. I don't want that to be the only thing memorable that I did. Right. So it's constantly hustling, trying to find footing, trying to get a foot in the door at places. I have almost two feet in the door here at, at AEW. Uh, I'll be at the Ring of Honor tapings, you know, so – um, who knows what's going to happen, but it's a constant up and down. It's a constant battle. And I feel right now with professional wrestling, there's so much great talent out there and there's not enough places that pay tremendous for them to go. And you have top real, maybe four top promotions. You have impact, you have new Japan. Uh, I would say new Japan strong as far as like American wrestling goes you have AEW. We'll see what happens with Ring of Honor. MLW is still a thing, too. NWA is still a thing. Um, but as far as, like, notoriety goes, those first ones are probably, like, the main ones. But there's not a lot of places for a lot of people to go. And that's the bummer. Like, even trying to get it into a place like NWA is is, is super hard. And, and, you know, or MLW or even high-end indie promotions, it's hard. Uh, and so I feel like there's so many good guys out there and that aren't getting a lot of love because they don't have internet buzz maybe, or people just don't want to take a chance on them. One of the uh, perfect example is one of my boys, Xavier justice. He's six, eight. He can walk it. He can talk. It looks like a star. As soon as you see him, you're like, Whoa, okay. What's up with this guy? Nobody will book him. And it's like, why sad, would you not sad. book him? I, I don't <clears throat> get it. We try to get him places, and it's like we can't get him places. Hell, Jake and I were just talking the other day. I reached out to plenty of places. They won't even hit me back. It's like, ah, what do you do? It's like, okay, I was on TV. I had a good X Division run. I'm doing stuff for AEW here and there. Not even a peep. You know, so it, it's hard right now unless you have a good string of momentum. You have a really good internet following that's going to chirp up about you. And you got that bandwagon momentum going. It's hard to really get places. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's wrestling's in a weird spot. It's in a good spot and it's in a weird spot when it comes like for talent. So, you know. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I guess they want to make sure that the, that. You know, as far as getting ratings these days, has definitely changed the game with the era of streaming that we're in right now. Obviously, because we're part of it. You know, word of mouth, trying to get out there because we're not on a network. We got to create our own channel. We got to get the word out there. I mean, we're working hard yeah. out there. And when you go back to say we're just a six eight, uh, a guy who's six eight, who who's got you know, you know, a uh, lot of uh, 
in ring potential and just walks and talks to roll. But then you got someone in WWE who's seven foot three who's very limited. So, and I'm not saying a name, but I think we all know uh, who we're talking about. Omos. Yeah. You said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's weird. It's like, but then you get in the same aspect, you have a guy that's <clears throat> okay. I'll, I'll myself, you know, a smaller individual in the ring, larger than life. But then you have a guy that's like maybe six two, a walking piece of cardboard. But that walking piece of cardboard is making way more money than me, you know. But then you do have guys that are about five eight, maybe even a little bit shorter, that are. Great technical wrestlers, maybe not a lot of charisma, but they're making some good money. Then you got a guy like, and good for them. I'm not taking that away from them. Then you got a guy like Jake something who's six two, a complete package. Can't he should be signed everywhere. And you know what I mean? It's like so what is it? What's the missing factor? What's the for everybody? You know? What is it? Why can't I get here? Or why can't Xavier get there? And then why can't Jake get there? Why can't Karam get there? We're all different, but we all have something to offer. But like then trying to compare ourselves to those people that are there, it's not fair because that's their path. That's not ours. But there is something. Is it timing? Is it who you know? Is it internet love? What is it? What is it that can't get us to that next big level what's preventing us to get there so it's it's a unfortunately when we sit there and ask ourselves this it drives us crazy so we can't we can't ask ourselves this and there's a bunch of other wrestlers that are just as good if not better that aren't on tv either or not blowing up on the internet either and it's like why why is it and i don't know and, and sometimes i feel like uh with internet stuff i feel like it's if so and so, it if 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 not enough people are saying that you're good, then nobody else is going to say that you're good because it's like high school. It's like the cool kids. If you're not cool over with the cool kids, then the other cool kids that are the other kids that want to be with the cool kids, they're not going to jump on your bandwagon either. It's almost like people can't think for themselves nowadays. Um, so I think that's part of the problem too, and. It, I, I, it, sometimes people that aren't good are in the cool kids club and they're the ones getting on every show and good for them, you know, make your money. But uh, when I see that, I'm like, damn, man, ah, I can't judge my path on compared to his or hers. But it's like, ah, I know I could do better than them in that situation. But then there's probably people seeing me that's getting some love on dark and or or you know getting they got love on impact they're like why is that guy getting why is he there i should be getting there so what is it what's the x factor what's the what is the missing piece and or pieces we're all trying to figure that out still it's man it's it's a mind fuck i can tell you that i mean it's going it's going to be um and you know i don't have to preach anymore uh, on it. You got me in your corner always. I appreciate we're, it. We're big fans of you. My kids love you. My wife loves you. We, we think you're phenomenal. And uh, I'm just blessed to be in this situation where I got you to be able to come here. Like, cause you didn't have to do this. So I, I appreciate you on that. Um, I enjoy it. I enjoy talking to, I like, I like talking shop. So no issue whatsoever. Well, tell your other friends. <laughs> <laughs> But, <laughs> they don't enjoy the shop, so <laughs> they I, don't. I, love, I do, and a lot of them don't. So, but that's, that's just fair. Me. That's fair. So, with all this being said, we're down to the last question now, and, and and you're already shooting for the stars, and you've been talking about it pretty much the whole time. What is the end goal for Rohit? Is it to get your spot with AEW and, and manage it and stay there and do that kind of stuff, or is it, or has it ever been? The limelight of, you know, the big one, WWE. Oh, dude. Of course, I would love to go to WWE. I would love to go back to Impact. I would love to be a main player in AEW. Wherever, it, it, I guess, relevancy. It's being relevant in professional wrestling. It's, it's your talents being recognized, respected, appreciated, and blown up. 
whether that would be me being a manager for somebody, whether that, you know, a mouthpiece like we talked about earlier, whether it would be me getting another X division run, a tag title run somewhere, a nice contract somewhere with some spotlight, anything that makes you relevant and a name stay in professional wrestling. I had it for a little bit. I walked away from it. Um, and you know, I don't really regret it because I, I believed in myself. I still believe in myself. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's just not, it's not in the cards, but I hope that it is. I'll continue to work hard and try to remain, or I should say, gain some relevancy again in some promotion. I would, I've been busting my butt doing a lot of AEW stuff. I think my promos, even though they're just on dark, I still think they're head of shoulders above a lot of other people. I'm hoping people will see that. I do sometimes see that in comments. So the last promo I cut, people that had no idea who I am, they're like, man, how come this guy isn't signed? How come he's not on TV? This dude is a character. He can talk. He ain't got to convince me. I'm not the one you got to convince. It's the guys that it's the powers that be. You got to talk to them. You got to, you got to tweet at them. You got to let them know, Hey, this guy should be on TV. And, and the more people that do that, the more that opens up doors and opens up eyes and people start to listen. But I guess to, to wrap it up and make it short, um, relevancy in a major professional wrestling company. That's what, that's the goal. I don't want to hang my hat on that one X division run. I love it. It's one of my favorite things in professional wrestling, probably my favorite thing that I did, but I don't want that to be my end all be all. Well, I mean, if you're doing ROH tapings here soon ish, uh, I, I know one match that I'm already ready for and it, it's a title match for you. So if I could see you and Joe go at it for the ROH TV title, Oh my God, that would be, I think you and Joe could paint a beautiful canvas. Dude, it's some more joy. If you can't paint it, if you can't paint a beautiful canvas with him, then something's wrong with you. You know what I mean? That dude is amazing and has been for years. So, uh, just being mentioned in the same breath with him is fantastic for me. But I mean, I, I really want. I would love to get some love at ROH and just free reign. I mean, come on, the shirts themselves. You can't spell Rohit with all the letters ROH. And then the old, oh. the old ROH logo, except it says ROH, huge, and then IT uh, right afterwards in small print. It, it, it writes itself. It's money. I, I'm made for Ring of Honor. Let's go. Let's do it. I vouch. Let's make it happen. Tony, get on it. Make it happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I, mean, I think it's money myself and the way he's cut that promo. I mean, I would love to see it. Um, yeah, I would, I would, and then the pure wrestling title, I would change it to the pure entertainment title. So, you know, I let's go. Thinking, yeah, I was thinking, I think you should have a pure run, too. I mean, or at least yeah. a shot at the pure title. Dude, um, I would cause so, I would cause so many problems and piss so many people off. <laughs> I would do everything but pure wrestling, but that would be, again, that would be like the whole exhibition thing and that would be the stick of it. And I think it would be great. I think it would be good. It would be entertaining. 100%. Oh, absolutely. Well, you have me excited for ROH's re-debut on a TV show uh, coming up. So, oh, man, I am grinning ear to ear. <laughs> hey, we'll see what happens. I I mean, I they, I could be in a good role or I might not be in a good role. But I'm, I'm happy to be there either way. But, of course – as a competitor, as a professional, I want to be able to give me the ball and let me run with it, and I will do the rest. That is, that's a guarantee. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I would love to see. I mean, I'd love to see that. I mean, if you're going to be at the tapings, I definitely would like to see some matches air on TV with you there uh, on ROH. And uh, I know around here in time. Uh, uh, AEW is going to be here for Dynamite and Rampage. I'll be there. And, yeah, so he'll be there. Say, so, hey, if you get that call, you better let, you better let your boy know so uh, maybe you know, find a way to meet up or something, man. Yeah. I'll let you <laughs> I, I hope, man. I mean, I'm still hustling for it. I'm still working towards it. We'll see what happens. Uh, I, I just, like I said, 
I want to find a spot where I can be relevant and show off my ability, show off my talents, and just let me do my thing. And trust me, the rest will fall into place. Yep. And I know that you have a YouTube channel. Uh, YouTube channel is uh, Rohit Raj, Raju, right? Yeah, I, honestly, I never really did anything with it. And I'm always, I've been watching, uh, I've been wanting to talk to people and just get my, my voice out there. If it takes off, it takes off. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I just beat God of War for the PlayStation 5. So that was the first video I dropped. I just wanted to express how much I loved it and all the cool things about it. So I'm like, hey, why not do it on a YouTube video? Um, I just talked about... Uh, creators like directors or movie studios or tv shows uh attacking fans um i'm a, i'm a, like i said i'm a huge nerd when it comes to certain things but like when something comes out uh, example like last jedi i'm a big star wars fan was not a fan of that i was not a fan of the direction they went with it and of course you're gonna have like some haters that say stupid things but i noticed like when people weren't a fan the backlash towards those fans that have constructive criticism you had creators dogging them you had um actual companies dogging them i'm just like i think that's uh, I, the wrong wrong route, route to go and then i'll be introducing um other videos too so if you're a fan of like content of that nature Drop a comment. Drop what your opinion. You think you think I'm wrong? Cool. Drop that too. Just kind of, kind of uh, try to keep it constructive. Try to keep it civil because I know it's YouTube and the comment sections are, are atrocious. But I'm I'm not trying to bring that type of energy. I'm just trying to bring good conversations to nerd shit. So I mean, let's do it. I mean, that's one of the things I like about Ethan is him and the toy hunting. And you've been on a couple of the toy hunts with him uh, when you guys did the Glory Pro shows down in St. Louis area. Uh, I personally think you just need to keep up, with, keep up with the reviews because I love your gaming reviews. I love your movie reviews. So like that way is I think where you need to go kind of do other things, but uh, man, I, I can't just brag about you enough. I really can't. Hey man, I appreciate the support. That's one thing. Like I, I love, um, I know you guys have, have been fans, you know, I, and I recognize you and, and I always do when, you guys are out in the crowd. So I just appreciate that stuff, man. It's it's good to have your work uh, appreciated because I do work hard and I always try to work hard and I enjoy what I do and I love professional wrestling. Uh, I love wrestling. I love being in the ring and telling the story, but I love being the character. I love being my favorite guy is Macho Man Randy Savage. He can get the job done in the ring, but he can get the job done out of the ring. And to me, that's the perfect blend. And I hope professional wrestling returns to that sooner or later. There's guys now that kind of do that. But for the majority, I think there's a guy, a lot of guys that don't do that. But that's the type of flavor I'm trying to bring. And I'm hoping, I'm glad you recognize it. I hope other, I hope a, a bigger audience will sooner or later as well. And I can grow as an individual, but my brand can grow as well. And I can get some, uh, get a good place in professional wrestling, get a good, get a good footing and just be remembered as, you know, something special. That's all I want. And uh, one last thing, um, uh, before I know you get out of here, I know you you, you said that, you know, internet is big, you know, you hit on the internet, you know, yeah. uh, you have a following. So where can people follow you on social media or maybe another other platforms that you may have? We talked about the YouTube. Um, of course, just look up Rohit Raju. You'll find me. I also have a Patreon where I do a lot of workout videos, exclusive picks, a lot of backstage stuff. You'll see a lot of road videos with me and the guys when we're on the road or in the gym or stuff like that, or just backstage stuff with guys, you know, hanging out and, and who I'm hanging out with. Um, of course, at Hakeem Zane. That's an old name, older name that I used to run with, but that's my Twitter H A K I M Z A N E. Uh, Raju Zane 80 is my Instagram. That's where most of my stuff goes. Pro Wrestling slash Rohit. Please show some love and support. And I will be on Banter and Babble, which is another podcast, but it's my friend's podcast that we just talk about like movies, music, video games, a lot of nerd stuff. Um, you'll catch me on there as well this Wednesday. I uh, Banter and Babble. You can look them up on their Twitch, their YouTube, of course. Again, their Instagram. But uh, that's where you'll find me. I do have a, a Facebook page, but I got locked out of it. So it hasn't been active in like a year. So unfortunately, <laughs> I had a lot of followers on there. That's gone. So and, and oh, that it's sucks. impossible to contact Facebook. So it's like, what can you do? 
Yeah, I think he got locked up by fact checkers, but you know that could be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my, my, but we appreciate you uh, so much for coming in here, uh, sharing the love and uh, sharing your story, and uh, in, with a great interview, and uh, you know, taking. I appreciate time. that. Uh, out of, out of, you know, it, it, all all great stuff, every every bit of it, and I know I, uh, I said Zach, Zach is always going to back back you. I mean, I'm the big oh, fan of your stuff, so I mean, hold on, I gotta see if I can find this photo real quick because this is my favorite photo of Rohit. Oh, I got myself. one too. I think I got one too. This this is me and the boys. Does everyone have the Dragon Rohit. Ball shirt on? No, we didn't have the Dragon Ball shirt. Like, Oh no, I did. Oh. Yeah, 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 I remember that, and I think I wrestled in the gold boots. Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah. I gotta get that shirt. I have to get that design. If I can find someone to do it, two R's. It's like my best-selling shirt. I'm a huge Wu Tang fan, especially old kung fu movies and hip hop. But I gotta get that shirt with two R's. I have the design in my head, but I can't draw it correctly. So if you know anyone that can do a really good design and not charge me an arm and a leg, that's what I'm looking for. Two R's. But that are in the shape of the Wu Tang symbol because I want to get that, but Rohit Raju because, like I said, that was my best selling shirt. I would love to get that again. Um, but yeah, man, I remember that. Was Ricky Steamboat there that day? Or yeah, that, that was. Did I wrestle? Did I wrestle Dan the Dad before he was Dan the Dad, or did I wrestle Cody? No, that was that was the night that that was Ricky. That was the Ricky show. Um, so I wrestled uh, Danny Adams. Before yeah, Danny Dan Adams. Yep. 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 Good show. Killer match. That, that's a, you remember when I told you that uh, Ricky came out and said that uh, there was a certain section that was the 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 true fans of the rest of, of the show was you guys it was us yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> sweet so <laughs> appreciate you man from him was awesome like I, I I picked his brain and he watched the match and he told me some really good things and the stuff he told me made me feel great because it was Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and the critiques and advice he gave me was also just such small things that I never thought of. It's like, well, that's why he's the dragon. That's why he's one of the best of all time. And and I, man, I love picking guys' brains like that. Love it. Absolutely love it. Great dude. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And uh, like you said, if you got anybody um, that, that would like to share, your, share their experience, just like you share with us, man, heck, throw them our way. We're always one I will. Of, always I will tell everybody. Our working guys. I will. I'll tell my, my Michigan crew guys. And uh, see if I can get them to do it. I know sometimes they're they kind of like don't like to do that stuff, but I'll, I'll tell them like, hey man, these guys are good people. Just jump on there. Yeah, you guy that's got that's been in the business since 1996, and trust me, I know all about respect. And uh, yeah, yeah, you know, hey, uh, I'm an oldie, so I'm I'm older than you, so you know. I mean, <laughs> if the gray in the beard doesn't does doesn't give you any hint, then uh, you know. <laughs> I only died this because I had a show. This is usually pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> is it really oh dude yeah it's like all this right here you can look at old pictures i'm surprised that that picture i wasn't really great but like this normally is like that's white <laughs> she'd uh, probably do it man because you know salt and pepper that's that's a sexy look yeah we'll see <laughs> <laughs> i used to for a while but i kind of like it like this now so and it looks lined up a little bit better so i'm like eh, all right we'll do it <laughs> wow. Man, it's been a pleasure, brother. I appreciate you guys having me, man. It was a great conversation, and uh, you guys got a good thing going here. Keep it up. All right, Rohit, thank thank you very much for uh, for joining us, man. And uh, stay safe, get that head better, man. And we're looking forward to see you on some ROH TV. How's that? Yeah, I love it, man. Hopefully, uh, things go well. Thank you. All right, Rohit, Rohit Raju, thank you very much, and uh, have a good night, sir. You too. Take care. All right. Well. Hey man, Some dude, I'm still stuff. grinning ear to ear like that. That's I cannot promote that man enough. I truly can't. So like for him to come here and and be here and with us and, and allow us to do that, like ever since I saw him wrestle, I was like I was sold on him. And the dude is money, man. If you have not watched that series of stuff in, in the pandemic era with uh, Impact Wrestling, where he was the X Division champion and going for that. You, you're missing out on what made him special. Like that was the perfect resume, in my opinion, for any wrestler to go to the next level. 
Like, it was the perfect resume. Uh, so, this is how I feel about it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, one last thing that we're going to touch on here tonight before we get out of here, and I was, I watched most of it. Uh, I watched everything except the uh, last match, which I'm going to do here anyway, because I already know what happened. You should have started with that! <laughs> what do you mean you should have started with that? Uh, you wanted to bring him on, so it's like, we don't want to make him wait. No, I'm like, talking about starting with the fact that you like you should have started with the indie match. That was the whole reason Elimination Chamber was even a pay per view. <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah, it's true. But you know, thoughts on that. Um, but no, I, I I don't know. So you got a chance to see the main event? I, I watched the whole show. Yeah, I watched the whole yeah. show. I was not yeah. I was not pleased with the females match. Uh, I'm not saying not not taking away from anything that the women did. Uh, it just wasn't, I don't know, it just didn't feel, Nikki Cross had some cool spots, like, I enjoyed the stuff with her, uh, I always love watching Carmella wrestle, I think she's very underrated as, as a talent, um, I'm happy that Asuka won, actually I, actually, I was rooting for Liv Morgan, I'm not gonna lie, I kinda wanted to see a Liv Morgan-Bianca Belair match, I thought that would be be cool, uh, but I'm, I'm glad to see Asuka win, because I am a fan of hers, um, but it just didn't, I don't know, the match just didn't flow like I felt it should. Yeah. One thing I kind of, that kind of, uh, like, that I wanted to just fast forward to be like, okay, let's just get to the start of the match. They talk and act too much, and they put too much dramatic of them going around the going around the pods. It's like, you know, hey, just, just do your normal entrance and just, you know, wait till uh, it's your turn, your turn to get into the ring. You know, um, but I mean, other than that, and like I said, the women's match was was okay. Um, to me, though, for what I've seen so far, the men's one for the U.S. title. Now that phenomenal, phenomenal. That, was, that that was phenomenal. I mean, those guys put in work. And what about the? Uh, to me, the whole move of, of the entire pay per view. Freaking Montez Ford surprising everybody with what he did. Okay. I mean, go, keep going. Sorry. I'm not going to try to stop. No, no, no. Go, no. go right ahead, man, because I don't know what, I don't know how to describe the move. I, all I know is I've never Which seen one? it before. Are you talking about the spider move that he's on the. Yes. Okay, so Amy's like, oh, my, my wife is watching with me, right? Amy's watching with me, and she's like, there's people who have done that before. I'm like, not quite like that. <laughs> like, I agree they've gone up there and done that kind of stuff. Uh, I think Sin Cara did it one year. Um, no, maybe it wasn't Sin Cara. Yeah, it was Sin Cara in the tag team match, wasn't it? Don't uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that. I can't remember. I don't know when the when the guy runs out after uh, dislocating his. No, finger. this is this is not the original Sankara. This is when Unico took oh, over okay. the role as Sakara. Uh, when he it was him and Kalisto. If I'm not mistaken, it was him and Kalisto were in one of the pods for the tag team match when they had the tag team uh, elimination chamber match. Okay, thank you, AJ. Thank you, AJ. It was Kalisto. Okay, I knew it was one of those two. I knew it was one of those two. Uh, but he went up there and did, like, a, he dropped down and did a Hurricanrana, if I'm not mistaken. But Montez Ford, like, hanging there and spinning upside down and then just dropping, like, killer stuff. And I've always been, I'm a Dawkins fan. I'm not going to lie. I am more of a Dawkins fan than I am a Montez fan. And the one issue that I have with Montez is he seems so animatronic when he's in the meet ring. Like, it just, I don't know if. I can't describe it like he overdoes it in my opinion when he's like swinging and stuff. But uh, the dude looked like a star last night. I will 100% stand by that. He looked like a star from his wardrobe that he came out in. The gear that he came out was spectacular. Like Montez looked like a star. But now by doing that, WWE, can we like separate this tag team and not have a have not have a Marty Jannetty? Can we have both these guys rock it up? Because Dawkins deserves more than he gets. Dawkins does not get the love that he deserves, man. Dawkins is the bomb. I I will stand by it 100%. Dawkins is my dude. <laughs> <laughs> Montez is growing on me, though. So 
overall, it was a, it was a great. Uh, the men's elimination chamber match was phenomenal. Damian Priest did amazing. Seth Rollins did amazing. Johnny Gargano did awesome. I loved uh, Reed's addition to it. Bronson Reed's addition to yeah. it. Um, I think Bronson Reed's going to be an amazing big man too once he just really yeah, starts to get that ball rolling. Right. Exactly. And exactly. And what can you say about Austin Theory? The dude's just good. Oh yeah, <laughs> good stuff. Well, let's talk about the whole ending. You had everybody doing spectacular with them with that freaking chamber door open. Here comes Logan Paul. Just I, we in. talked about this. Did I not say that? That's I told you. I told you, and I think I told you right here, if I'm not mistaken, on yes, you did. On, on broadcast that we're getting Logan Paul, uh, Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. They went right into it. Um, I don't necessarily like how that ended like that, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, and it almost seems like they're pushing Logan as not the face. So I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it, I mean, you're just gonna have favorites on both sides. That's I mean, that's what wrestling is now. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter if you're a good guy or a bad guy, really. I mean, it still does because that's what makes the, the product really flow, right? Um, and you got to have that dynamic still. But the the years of just booing the bad guy to boo the bad guy or boo the good guy, I mean, cheer the good guy to cheer the good guy, them are dead. Uh, thank you, Cena, for, for killing that, really, because – um, Not necessarily. I, I, mean, I no. I say it's seen. It's Cena's era where that all died out. Because, like I've said before, I'm not a Cena fan when it comes to the fact of him being a good guy. I'm a Cena fan because I like to boo him. I like that he's my villain, basically, because the guys that I liked weren't getting, you know, weren't in that position. You know, the Edges, the Randy Orton's, CM Punk, like those were my guys. So you know, when they got the title, it was, it was a freaking win for me. Uh, and they were the bad guy, you know. So like, it that that era changed it all to where it didn't matter. I mean, now I'm thinking about it. I think you're right because Stone Cold really fudges it up for everybody. <laughs> hey, you just gotta have make people. <laughs> no, that was actually from last night's show. You came out, so I mean. <laughs> oh man, come on, man! My show was awesome last night. I I felt it did good and. I had decent feedback. Uh, uh, yeah, I was I, happy I, with it. I mean, I mean, you could, you could be uh, GQ. Oh, brother, this guy stinks. <laughs> <laughs> the only match really that I had issue with at Elimination Chamber uh, was Bobby and Bray. I mean, Bobby and Brock. Yeah, Brock. Would, I mean, Brock really lost it. I mean, but give, give your props to Chad Patton though for taking an F five out on the floor. On the on the wood boards, not even hitting the mat, and the table was already broken down by Bobby. So he's he's just gonna uh, Brock just put him up in an F five, just threw him on top of uh, on, on on wood plates. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh oh, I, I pissed off somebody. Look, uh, uh, I pissed off somebody. <laughs> go do cartwheels and shoot bottle rockets out of your butt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was think of that. <laughs> but no, that was that was my that was that was my real like negative. I don't know, Bobby and Brock like they've had so many good encounters, and I understand this is more so probably to fa- farther storyline. So I, I get that at, as a fan because right. Bray, you know, made the challenge that whoever came out of it, the winner, he's going to take on, uh, kind of thing. And it's a way to take Brock out of the picture for WrestleMania. Maybe I don't know, like. Because he, he attacked a ref. So, like, we've had him attack officials now two weeks in a row, I think it was. I think. Yeah, um, so, we'll see what happens. You know? Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens there. But I don't know. Those two, I like watching those two wrestle because it takes you back to when it was the, the world of the Giants, you know, wrestling each other and uh, these larger in life characters. Um, and I appreciated that because those two guys can actually work and go and make it look good. And uh, I just thought it tarnished what they've already done with those two. Yeah, what, I don't know if you saw this, but uh, shout out to you uh, from Austin Cage. Can't wait for the next Glory Pro show. So, 
hopefully I'll be coming back to a, to a Glory Pro show. I want, I want to try to make more headway with potentially getting more of those guys on the show. Um, you know, since they are a local promotion in the St. Louis area in the Midwest, I, I would love to feature Dan the Dad in them. Because uh, I, I am a I am a firm believer in that company. I really am. And uh, I know I have my home company. Uh, and also we have SICW in the house with us here. And I'm a firm believer in that company. And I just want to promote the stuff that I love and respect. And ACW, yeah, can't forget about them. Why am I why am I forgetting them? I apologize. I apologize. Searcher, do not beat me up. Do not do <laughs> <laughs> But no, it, it's it's awesome that we get to do this, and uh, I'm very blessed to be here and talking about what I love. Now let's talk about the fact that Sami Zayn speared Jay Uso. Yeah, I'm, I'm like disappointed. Said, <laughs> yeah, um, like I said, I haven't really, I have not seen any part of it, so I don't know what led up to it, um, but. I don't know if it was accidental. I don't know if it was on purpose, you know. So you're going to have to kind of take us to the take on that since you saw the entire match. I, I, I can. I can. Oh, yes, it's IWA, IWA production. IWA is another great promotion that I, you know, I haven't, I haven't graced theirs. NGW, I'm, I, spoiler, Zemiz may be joining NG, NGW eventually. So just spoiler. I can yeah. say that. Um, this right here, okay. Austin, I, I, this is my buddy Skyler. Uh, so, in uh, this picture right here, so there's myself, Rohit's in the middle, my buddy uh, Chris is behind, and Skyler's the guy off to the to the other side. So that is okay. my my dude Skyler. He's man, no no relation to Johnny Cage, so okay, no no. Gotcha. <laughs> so, <laughs> It, it's funny because like AJ and I went to Glory Pro, right? And we're standing in line and there's these three freaking dudes. Uh, Adam wasn't in the picture with us and he wasn't there, but uh, Chris and Adam are brothers, right? And we were talking about something. I can't remember what we were talking about. Or I was talking with AJ. They overheard and like the other wrestling fans and we're all, you know, griping back and forth. I'm crapping on Jeff, Jeff Hardy like usual, um, uh, all kinds of other things. And, and, we started talking while well, these three guys decided to sit behind us and like it blossomed a friendship, man. Like my wife and I have gone and taken the kids to St. Louis and we met up with them in St. Louis. They live in like in Indiana. Oh crap. Uh oh. Man down. Man down. <laughs> Our truth fell. <laughs> so may I just say as a disclaimer, it was not Z that knocked him down. It was little Jimmy that had enough and just smacked him off his pedestal. So But no, no. Skyler and them are like like brothers to me, dude. It's funny how like wrestling fans and wrestlers like we can all come together in one little thing, and that's why I love about wrestling. It's just is the fact that it doesn't matter where you go, it doesn't matter what the promotion is, doesn't matter uh, if you've been there before, if you haven't been there before, you're gonna find somebody that's like minded and respectable, um, and you're gonna bond with them. And I'm. I'm blessed to have that guy, but let's talk about uh, Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn now and that match. Uh, bro, when you get ready to sit down and watch that match, you are going to be dumbfounded in the reaction that both Roman Reigns and Sami gets. That is going to be a testament to professional wrestling for the years to come. It's going to be something that people are talking about uh, because, I mean, the entrance alone, I think, was like 10 to 15 minutes yeah. for both guys. And then there was three minutes of them not touching each other in the ring. That Roman is just standing at the in the corner, Sammy's standing in the other corner, and they're just like, the fans are just going to town, bro. <laughs> Can I just say Montreal was just totally lit the entire pay per view, oh, major fast pay per view because I mean, man, I, I don't know. They were just totally hyped. That that whole pay per view itself, what made it exciting is just the fans' reaction and being into it. I mean, they they were on the edge of their seats pretty much the entire show. It, so. it, it it's that factor like. 
like you've said and like someone said in the, the comments, you know, uh, the crowd is a big factor when it comes to, to professional wrestling. And Montreal proved why the crowd is so important because that match was made bigger from just that crowd in Montreal. And the fact that Seth, not Seth, uh, Roman and Sammy put on a hell of a story performance. Like Roman kept going over to Sammy's wife, talking, you know, I wanted you to be in the family. I wanted this to happen, blah, blah, blah. Like everything they did between the crowd, the match, it, it's what we love about professional wrestling. And that was the great thing is that this entertainment is still being uh, driven and, and brought together. Um, but yeah, first time Roman got booed. Oh, yeah. 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 Agreed. Uh, yeah. Oh, the it, was, oh, it was just, and then to see Jimmy come out, to see Jimmy come out was just crazy. Like, because, you know, all of us fans, we're, we think we're in the know, right? Yep. <laughs> Jimmy and Jay can't right. go go over the border because, you know, of certain extra activities outside of the ring. Right. And here's Jimmy at ringside kicking the crap out of freaking Sami Zayn's head. <laughs> and then just the, the reaction Jay got, and I don't care. I'm still going to stand by. I want Jay to take the belt. Like, I don't want Cody to take the belt. I don't want Sammy to take the belt. I want Jay to take the belt from Roman. A hundred percent. Like, I want it to be Jay. I want Jay to realize that Roman is using it, you know. But then Sammy, you know, spirit him. So we're going to get Sammy Zayn and Kevin Owens versus the Usos at WrestleMania. Mark my word. I know other sites have yeah. said it, but I feel that's the way it's going to go, and I fear it because WWE has something special in one of the Usos, and not that Jimmy's going to be the the Marty Jannetty by any means, because Jimmy's just as talented. But main event Jay has something, in my opinion. It it I've never been so hyped on him before, and I've been a fan of the Usos for a while. Uh, but yeah, I just Jay has sold me on him being. I never thought I'd see him outside of the tag team division, and then that whole character made me realize that he could be outside of the tag team division. Yeah. So I want to see it. I want to see it happen. Yeah. And also, uh, as a side note for for that crowd, I'm in I'm in uh, favor of sing alongs. Two things. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, my, like my one of my favorite parts of the sing alongs is Montez in the thing just. And he starts doing, you know, Seth's thing, right? And then the yep. crowd just starts like, it started really low. And then it just kept boiling and boiling and boiling. And then boom, it's in this big, ch and I'm like, that's a moment right there. <laughs> that's <Yep>. a moment. <laughs> so, yeah. Was, I, I, all in all, Elimination Chamber did its job. And we saw great storyline development. We saw great um, progression uh, and whatnot. But. It also failed on some – not failed. I can't say it failed. It fell flat. Me. Yeah, it fell flat on some other uh, things. But overall, I will still be tuning into Monday Night Raw, so I can't bitch oh, about yeah. it. <laughs> so. I mean, heck, the first night is 41 days away, I mean, <sighs> for WrestleMania. Yeah. So now we're in the home stretch now as far as where, do, where does everything go from here. So – I mean, I know we're going bigger and better, and we're going up after a super show that we had. Like, dude, go back and watch Dan Seven if you guys haven't watched it. That that show was freaking amazing. A double stack day, my friend. We were busy. We were I didn't busy. even play PlayStation today. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, you know, I, I, sh I, I had to stomach literally stomach through the day to get literally like about. 60 to 80, 80 ounces of a Pedialyte in my system because I was just drained. I don't know what it is, but I, I, I'll feel better tomorrow for certain. Now that I've got There's all this ginger tea for that. Yeah. I like electrolytes. <laughs> I, I, I like this Pedialyte. You know, they actually make a powder now? But no, I, cause, I, because God bless my life, whose birthday is tomorrow, by the way. I love, oh, love oh happy birthday, wrestling wife. Yeah, yeah, that's right, because I got promoted last night. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. 
And uh, so, she, her dear, she saw that I was kind of weak. I, was, you know, I had all this to do to prepare for today. So, I got to go out and get some Pedialyte or whatever. And she came back and uh, never, uh, never a dull moment. So, uh, you, you know what? I think Skylar's onto something, Rick. We, you and I need to go to a Glory Pro show sometime, man. Well, I'll, we- I'll tell you. And that is, if I do not have another wrestling commitment anywhere else, uh, I will definitely consider it. Uh, there's, I'm not. There's nothing I can say bad about Glory Pro. Oh no, I, I, I love there's those nothing guys. Nothing I can say. You guys are working hard. You're, you're. They're, they're doing everything they can. I mean, heck, the, the promotions on the, the opening credits. You know, the, the double screen. So it's not like I'm not leaving you guys out. So, you guys are there, and you're gonna still be there. So yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, I just had a fantastic night. I mean, thanks to, uh, Dan B. Severn, thanks to Rohit Raju for great, tremendous interviews. Um, just a fantastic day or a fantastic night. Um, to, you know, half of this wouldn't be possible without my, without my guy by my side here, uh, doing it. So, uh, man, you had a busy week or two and you, you stuck out and, sacrificing your playstation time and <laughs> i mean i had to, i had to tear down a ring to the, last night uh do the show tear down the ring uh i mean i gotta do it with shyly uh, Tib- uh tiberia storm i always fudge his name up uh yeah there player are, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I've we, seen we shrapnel there and it's like shrapnel you know, and I yeah I mean oh man I was making fun of shrapnel all night like <laughs> oh, <laughs> that is my guy that is that is a good dude I, I like shrapnel yeah. Skyler love you buddy have a good one man uh, but yeah just it was a great show there. turned around and then Sid calls me today like hey me and the wife need to carry a bed and oh my god that bed was so. Damn heavy. <laughs> <laughs> they should have just sold it with the, oh, well, it was an apartment. They were, I mean, they're, they rented a house, but they should just left it there and bought a new bed. Yeah. It was stupid heavy, but oh, we got it done. Oh, so. my God. Well, yeah, glad, uh, well, at least, you know, hey, you know, he, he had a match last night. He had to help with things and, you know, and I had to move a bed, but now we're we're in the home stretch here, and we're gonna be. Oh, one more thing I wanted to show before we left because I actually got contacted by Matt Creed on this, and I'm gonna go and get this brought up here real quick to make sure that everybody knows about this because I even got a better poster from uh, from him just a bit ago. This is their big show. It's a two night event or two day event. Saturday, March fourth at seven. Sunday, March fifth at four p.m. Celebrating over thirty one years of the AIWF. So, and the and the AIWF is uh, across the entire U.S. So, oh really? Gonna, okay. Yep. Yeah, and we're going to talk with Matt Creed next week, and uh, we want to definitely get some insights and uh, we're. This, you know, AIWF is going. In fact, uh, when WPW was around, uh, they, they were part of the AIWF. I, uh, I know definitely before the pandemic hit. So we had, there was actually a title change that actually happened here uh, about four years ago for the AI, AIWF. Nice. So with the Cruiserweight title, which I think, unfortunately, our boy uh, Gino uh, lost the title about a couple weeks ago. Yes, he did. But he's on the bigger and better things, though. I mean, I mean, Gino Rivera. I mean, goodness. can you say getting beat up by a uh, Big Bill is a bigger and better thing? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Gino's killing it, and I, I, I was so happy to watch that match. Uh, uh, he, he did good. He tried to. He, he did. He did the best against Big Bill. That's all I can say. He did the best. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but man, yeah, like I said, big and be- bigger and better things here. We're going to be talking with Matt Creed here, definitely over this, uh, and we'll promote this event here tomorrow uh, or next week. I should tomorrow. God, I <laughs> need to get off the juice. Um, <laughs> but no, man, we we've had a long and great productive day, and uh, like, and uh, we're we're uh, 
we're tuckered. So we're going to uh, get on out of here and prepare for our week. Hopefully all of you uh, who've watched us tonight, listen to us. Thank you very much once again. Please follow, like, subscribe, spread the word. Tell them to do the same thing. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch. Yes, we're not showing Wreckfest because they changed that sucker finally this past week. So no more Wreckfest on Twitch. So, no, it's all wrestling, my friend. But, no, uh, we are out of here. Uh, I got to find I gotta find a, uh, a, a expression for that, but I ain't going to steal anybody's. That's for darn sure. <laughs> my, my mind's too tired for even to think about that right now. But, uh, Z, once again, thank you for all the work that you do. I mean, and, uh, like I said, just some great stuff tonight, my friend. This this is this is my uh, this is going to be our bread and butter. So like I, I'm I'm ready to make it a, a real thing with you, my dude. Like uh, I'm oh, pumped, yeah. well, pumped to be here. We'll definitely make it happen. So for the Gem City Mouse and Miz, I am Rough Cut Rick Ruby. We thank you for everyone for being part of our double episode Super Sunday, and we'll see you next week uh, at our regular time at 9 p.m. Central. Where we will have Matt Creed for episode 92. Y'all have a good rest of your week, and we will see you then. Thanks again for tuning in to tonight's episode of the Falls Count Everywhere podcast. Don't forget our friends at the following Outside the Ring STL, the Searcher and Hide podcast, and We Talk Wrestling. The Falls Count Everywhere podcast is an LTX Enterprises production.